Hello and good afternoon friends, welcome to the CEC Edusite Live Lecture, dear friends. With another lecture on genetics, today we would be talking on linkage and crossing over and for this very discussion we have once again with us in our studios Dr. Charu Dogra Rawat. Dr. Charu Dogra Rawat is Assistant Professor in Department of Zoology, Ramjus College, University of Delhi. So dear friends, let's take advantages from the experiences of Dr. Charu Dogra Rawat and let's try to understand more and more about linkage and crossing over under the series genetics. Hello ma'am, welcome to the Edisit lecture. Thank you Geetika. Uh, hello students, uh, so as she said we will be talking about linkage and crossing over today. You have already uh, done the Mendelian laws of inheritance and an important law of inheritance was the law of independent assortment. Where basically the two uh, genes used to assort independently, they used to represent in the gametes equally and then inherited in the offspring. But there were certain uh, things which were found which were uh, exception to the law of independent assortment and the reason was that for that was basically the genes on a particular chromosome was found to be linked that is they get inherited together. So we will get deeper into this and we will also look at the mechanism how this linkage occurs. So the specific learning objectives for this particular session would be to understand this deviation from Mendel's law of independent assortment to understand the discovery of linkage, for examples we will take, to understand about the complete linkage and the partial linkage, the two different phenomena and we will also understand the basis of the occurrence of recombinance in the, um, uh, in the F1 or F2, in the F2 generations which is found. So in case of classical dihybridism of Granger mendel as we were talking about, the different alleles of the two genes segregate independently. So if a round and a yellow pod was uh, crossed with a wrinkled and green pod which was homozygous then in the F1 generation and in the F2 generation there used to be the uh, segregation of the gametes and individual traits used to assort independently and give a ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So the gametes which were created are capital G, capital R, small, capital G, small r, small g, small, capital R and small g, small r. 25% of each of the gamete is formed or basically the two traits are represented in the gametes in 24-5% each and the phenotypes as I said which you get in the F2 generation is the yellow and the round seeds 9 uh, is the ratio, the yellow and the wrinkled seeds 3 is the ratio the green and the round seeds 3 is the ratio and again green and the wrinkled seed 1 is the ratio. So typical dihybrid ratio was 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So now the question is that is independent assortment always the case and we will look at it that no it is not. It depends upon whether the genes are linked or not. If Mendel had probably done a cross with for example a trait which is called as Li where the tall and the long internode was there versus the short internode and what is represented by capital V, the inflated versus the constricted pod. If he would have crossed the, uh, the P uh, containing these different traits, then he would have gotten very different results. The two genes are both on chromosome number 3 and are so close together that they do not segregate independently, that is they are linked. Linkage was first seen a few years after Mendel's laws were rediscovered in 1900. By that time, in 1902 and 3, Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary had already proposed the chromosomal theory of inheritance. Walter Sutton, while working on the chromosomes of the grasshopper Brachistola magna, concluded that chromosomes could be paired and these paired chromosomes separate as the germ cells are formed. The German cytologist Bovary also concluded that sperm nuclei and egg nuclei contribute equal amount of genetic information to see urchin embryo. So basically chromosomal theory of inheritance was already laid down and the Mendel's laws were rediscovered. But certain experiments by certain scientists, for example by Bateson and Punnett in 1905 indicated that the law of independent assortment is not true. 
He worked on the trait of sweet peas, a flower color that can be either purple or red and the purple is dominant to the red color. The other trait he took was the pollen shape that can be either oblong or round. The oblong is again dominant to the round. When he crossed the purple long with the red round uh, species, then the F1 offspring was found to be all purple and long because the capital P is dominant to the small p and the capital L is so dominant towards the small l. So, F1 offsprings were all purple, uh, purple flower color and long uh, pollen shape. When it was self crossed, the capital P, small p, capital L, small l, when it was self crossed, the gametes produced would be the capital P, capital L, capital P, small l, small p, capital L and small p, small l and it will possess four different phenotypes. So, in the F2 generation as you can see after the self fertilization, the expected number according to the Mendelian law of independent assortment was the ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 as shown on the right hand side of the table. So, expected number was that the purple flower long pollen uh, will be 240 species representing this, the purple flowers round pollen will be 80, red flowers long pollen will be the 80 of the offsprings and the red flowers round pollen will be 27 of the offsprings giving a ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. However, the observed number was uh, deviating from this experimental number. The ratio was found to be 15.6, 1, 1 1.4 is to 4.5. So, in the F2 generation, the observed ratio was 15.6 is to 1 is 1 is to 1 1.4 is to 1 4.5. The expected ratio, a typical dihybrid ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 is not seen. So, basically the parental phenotypes which were the uh, purple flowers with long pollen were and the red flowers with round pollen were over represented. However, the purple flowers with round pollen and red flowers with long pollen were less rep under represented. So, parental phenotypes were over represented and non parental phenotypes were underrepresented. The evidence that the two genes do not assort independently needed to be there. So, it was basically pointing out to the fact that the two, pheno the two genes or the two traits, the color, flower color and the uh, shape of the pollen was not independently assorting. The nature of this physical linkage, however, was not apparent to Bateson and Punnett at that time. The linkage was first correctly interpreted in 1912 by T. H. Morgan in Drosophila. So, he established the link between the I color and the X chromosome. So, X chromosome is the sex chromosome uh, in the case of Drosophila in Drosophila and he established that this I color in the Drosophila is sex linked and how did he show that? that he uh, did this cross in which he took a red eyed female and crossed it with a white eyed male. In the F1 generation, he got half of the females which were red eyed and half were the males which were red eyed again. And in the F2 generation, half females were red eyed, there was 1 by 4 males which was red eyed and there was 1 by 4 which was white males which was there. So, this is phenotypic uh, uh, what, what they got after this particular cross and if you look at the genetic arrangement then you will see that the parents, the red female has a gene of for example W and which was located, located on the X chromosome and the white male had this um, mutated gene W and uh, the capital W was dominant over the small w which was located on the X chromosome and then there was the Y chromosome in the white male. The gametes which they will produce for the uh, F1 generation, the female will produce all capital W X chromosomes uh, containing uh, the X chromosomes containing capital W gene and the male will produce one X chromosome containing the mutated Y gene and the Y chromosome. So, when in the F1 F offspring you can see that all the females or half you obtain both the species the males and the females, but all females were red because carrying this particular X chromosome containing capital Y 
and all the males were red male because the red female contributed the X chromosome containing capital W to the male. So, F1 offspring all have irrespective of the fact whether it was a male or a female the red eye colors. In the F1 gametes if you look at therefore, it will have because it is a heterozygous red female, it will produce two kinds of gametes. One will contain the capital W the red eye gene and the another will contain a small w or a white eye gene and the male will produce an X chromosome containing capital W gene and the Y chromosome. So, if you look at the F2 offsprings, the uh, shown ratio is obtained where the females there are 50 percent of females and 50 percent of males all the females are red eyed because they are having one X chromosome containing capital W gene out of this half are homozygous for this particular allele and half is heterozygous for this particular allele but because the red uh, capital W is dominant therefore, you will get uh, still the red color and in males you will have both the combination in which half of the males or one fourth of the total of springs would be red I have red eye color and whereas the other half will have the white eye color. So, this was one of the crosses that they did. Now, what they did was a reciprocal cross in which now they took the female to be white eyed color and the male to be red eyed color and they obtained that in F1 generation half of the females was so all the females were red colored whereas all the males were white eyed um, uh, in color. And in the F2 generation the out of the 50 percent of the females one fourth were red, one fourth were white and out of the 50 percent of the males again one fourth was red and one fourth was white. So, they looked at the genotypic um, distribution and in F1 parents you can see that the white female will possess will be homozygous for uh, the mutated allele for the red color red eye color. So, it will have small w on both the X chromosomes whereas the male will have the capital W on its only one X chromosome which it has. So, F1 gametes the white female will produce all gametes containing X chromosome with white eye color whereas the male will produce all gametes containing X chromosome to be capital W and the gametes containing Y chromosome. So, in the F1 offspring when the cross is made the females will possess X chromosome from the male which will carry a red eye color. So, therefore, all the females will be red eyed in color uh, red colored eyes whereas, the males will contain one X chromosome coming from the maternal side and therefore, it will have a white male uh, white eyed male. In the F2 generation the gametes are shown and if you look at the F2 offspring then half of the females which are produced will be red eyed and therefore, half of the males which are produced is also red eyed. So, the two reciprocal crosses the the, uh, the uh, result of the F, F2 offspring clearly states that this eye color gene is lying on the X chromosome. So, wherever the X chromosome is going this eye color is also going or both the chromosome are basically because it is located on the X chromosome. So, that is said to be it is X chromosome linked. So, it is an X linked gene this eye color is X linked gene they are not independently assorting, but because it is present on the X chromosome it is always carried on to the next offspring wherever this X chromosome containing the wild type or the dominant red eye color gene is going. So, uh, the results indicate the white locus is X linked present on the X chromosome males carry only one allele for X linked genes and are called as the hemizygous uh, in nature. Then further they did certain more experiments for example, the, the, the traits they took uh, the traits Morgan took was the yellow body allele which is recessive to the gray body allele, the white eyed allele which is recessive to the red eyed allele as we just saw or the miniature wing allele which is recessive to the normal winged allele. So, wild type uh, drosophila will have normal winged red eyed and a gray, gray body. However, the mutation the they also identified certain mutated drosophila which will have the miniature wing the white eyed allele or the yellow body which is there. And as already observed that the white eye gene was located on the X chromosome he also found that the gene for the miniature wings was also located on the X chromosome. 
So, what they did in this experiment was he crossed a female white miniature with a wild type male. So, the genotype will be small w, small w, m and m and w plus m plus slash y. So, in this case we are referring to small w as the recessive allele and w plus as the wild type allele or small w as the mutated allele and the white eyed allele and small w plus as the wild type allele for the red eye color and the same goes for the m. The small m is for the miniature wing which is the mutated allele and small m plus is the wild type allele that is a common denotion in genetics which we do. So, either we mention it as the small w and capital W or we refer it to as the small w and small w with a superscript of plus which is wild type allele it is usually denoted like that. So, when he crossed these two uh, species, uh, the, these two organisms, the F1 phenotype that all females were wild type, whereas the males that were produced had white eyes and miniature wings. So, you can see that because they are X linked, then because the X chromosome in the female, it contains two X chromosome and one of the X chromosome is coming from the female that will carry this white eye miniature wing and the wild type is coming from the male and this wild type will always be dominant over the X which is coming from the female, all the females will have the wild type. However, the uh, male offsprings will contain X chromosome coming from the maternal side which is white eyed and miniature wings and therefore it will be represented and the other chromosome is X. Therefore, all the males will be white eyes and miniature wings which are there. So, in the F1 all males were white eyed with miniature wings and all females were wild type for eye color and wing size because there was a presence of the wild type allele W plus M plus which was dominant over the W and M which was coming from the maternal side. So, F1 female have genotype WW plus and MM plus red and normal. So, it is a red eyed and a normal as, as we have seen here that all the wild type females are there. So, it will have this genotype and possible gametes will be again 25 percent of each if independent segregation is true. So, it is a typical dihybrid cross we are looking at. It will produce these kinds of gametes when it is crossed with a male having the genotype of white and miniature therefore, small w and small m. Then in F2 generation you will get 25 percent of each of these. You will get white miniature, white normal, red miniature and red normal. So, white miniature and red normal would be the parental uh, genotype. However, white normal and red miniature will be the new genotype or a recombinant genotype which is there. So, if you look at in the F1 phenotypes and you cross, you know, you the, the cross was made between the wild type female and the white eyed miniature winged mutated male. In the F2 phenotype, there are four type of phenotypes which is there. And in each of the phenotypes, there will be males and females which will be present. So, as you can see the wild eyed miniature wings there will be 359 females and 399 one uh, there were 359 females and 391 males, but they were all white eyed and miniature. You will get wild type also again 439 and 392 in number. So, the total parental phenotypes found were 1541. However, there were two newer phenotypes which were formed which was white eyed wild type wings and wild type eyes however miniature wings were there and these were referred to as the recombinant phenotypes and the number was 900. So, total progeny was 2441 out of which the percentage recombinants could be calculated which was 36.9 percent it was found. So, now if these two traits were segregating independently then in both males and females all the phenotypes would have been represented equally or there will be parental phenotypes and recombinant phenotypes, but each would be represented. The total parental will be 50 percent and total recombinants would be 50 percent also. But as identified by the Bateson and Punnett, it was clearly shown that there was an over representation of the parental phenotypes and under representation of the recombinant phenotype which was there. 
in F2, the most frequent phenotypes for both sexes were the phenotypes of the parents in the original cross, which were the white eyes with miniature wings, the males, and red eyes with normal wings, which was the female. The non-parental phenotypes, which we are referring to as the recombinant phenotypes, the white eyes with normal wings or red eyes with miniature wings occurred in about 37% of the F2 flies which is well below the 50% predicted for independent assortment. So it was a clear evidence that independent assortment is not taking place in this particular example. The Morgan's proposal was that during meiosis, alleles of some genes assort together because they are near each other on the same chromosome or they are said to be linked. So he proposed that this eye color and the normal wing these two alleles, these two genes are lying on the same chromosome and very closer to each other. Therefore, when they are inherited, they are not separated from, they do not independently assort and they tend to inherit together. And therefore, you get more number of parental recombinants rather than the uh, new uh, parental uh, type rather than the new recombinants which is there. So these, uh, this is the example of linkage or this is how it showed that the genes are linked together on the chromosomes. He also proposed that recombination occurs when genes are exchanged between X chromosomes of the F1 females. So we will come back to this particular statement after a while when we talk in detail about that how this the, the occurrence of the recombinants occur when the crosses are done. So we will come back but the basic idea here is that the all the genes which are present in the chromosomes they are not independently assorted however certain genes which are either located on the same chromosome or they are located very close to each other on the chromosome they are they tend to be inherited together and this is the concept of linkage. Independent segregation is true for genes localized on different chromosomes. So if the genes are located on different chromosomes, they tend to independently segregate. However, the genes which are present very near to each other on the same chromosome do not segregate at all and are inherited as a fixed combination or what is referred to as a haplotype. This situation is also called as the complete linkage. A continuum between these two marginal situation exists which is termed as the incomplete or partial linkage. For example, in Morgan's cross which we just saw, the female will produce gametes or the X in the parental the combinations will be M plus and W. So M plus is again the wild type normal wings whereas the small W is the, uh, is the white eyed color and there will be M and W plus which will be the miniature and W plus and the recombinants would also be there. So expected if there is an independent segregation then there is an expectancy of 0.25 of each of the parentals and each of the recombinants as we were talking about. So there should be 50% of the parental phenotype and 50% of the recombinant phenotype if the two uh, alleles were assorting independently. If both the alleles were completely linked then there would be no recombinants that would occur and therefore 0.5 and 0.5 will be the parental uh, phenotype which is occurring. So 50-50% of both the parents will occur but there will be no occurrence of the recombinants. But since there was recombination that was occurred and the uh, observed partial linkage, observed linkage frequency was 0.31 and 0 0.31 in case of parentals and 0 0.19 and 19 in case of recombinants, this was an example of a partial linkage. So usually uh, independent segregation is said when the genes are localized on different chromosomes or they are very far apart because when they are very far apart on the same chromosome also then there will be multiple crossovers. We will get into detail of this mechanism but then there will be multiple crossovers in between which effectively will uh, lead to the uh, independent assortment of the two genes which are located on the same, same chromosome. But when they are lying very close to each other on the same chromosome, then they tend to be inherited together or there is a complete linkage. Incomplete linkage when there is a partial linkage. 
The other examples are the G. N. Collins showed that colorless aileron and vexi endosperm in maize were inherited together. J. B. S. Heldain proposed that the pink eye color and albino condition in mice were linked because the genes for these conditions were located close on the chromosome. So, if you looked at the closely linked loci in the back cross or the complete linkage, then loci that are physically very close are always inherited together and the back cross will have only two offspring classes with equal probability. So, the same thing is shown in the way of a, of a cross here that the two alleles for example, capital A and capital B, if they are crossed and if a back cross is done with the recessive homozygous condition, then the odds will be the existence of 1 is to 1 or the frequency will be 50 percent or to 50 percent when there is a complete linkage. However, in the general model, the F1 hybrid has different alleles on each locus of the pair of homologous chromosome. If a crossing over takes place between the two loci A and B, the two additional offspring groups who inherited the near combination of this arises. So, for example, in the F1 generation, if there is a crossing over, we will talk in detail about this crossing over, but the occurrence of recombinants is because of this particular crossing over which is occurring and as you can see when the back cross is done the two of the phenotypes which is obtained contains one of the chromosome hanging having half of the white segment and half of the black segment because the crossing over has taken place and the frequency therefore is not 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 or the odds is not 1 is to 1 but parental combinations the um, uh, has uh, odds of greater than 1 rather than the recombinants which is occurring in lesser frequency which is there. The linkage phases there are coupling and repulsion, coupling when both the dominant are present on one of the chromosome and repulsion when there is one dominant and one recessive uh, allele which is present on one of the chromosome is there. So, why so many parental types in the offspring was there? The two genes are not showing independent assortment because they are linked that is they are on the same chromosome. So, I hope this concept is clear now that the two genes are not showing independent assortment because they are linked and they are on the same chromosome and but why there are any non-parental types you know there is not complete linkage which is there. There is a crossover between the non-sister chromatids in the in another session we will talk about the detail about the mechanism of this but because they exchange some of the segments the non-sister chromatids the types of gametes would also produce recombinant chromosomes as it is shown for these two particular alleles and therefore there is an occurrence of the recombinants which is there. So, genes that are on the same chromosome travel through meiosis together. However, alleles of chromosomally linked genes can be recombined by crossing over. So, it is again shown that there are two uh, alleles which we are talking about here the red and the long. So, a wild type parent has red and long and another one has a white and short and if they are crossed together in the F1 generation they will be red and long because the capitals are dominant and in meiosis you will obtain two different kind there will be no recombinant if there is no crossing over which is there and the two chromosomes will segregate independently. If there is a recombination there is a crossing over that is occurred then you will get newer chromosomes containing a capital R and small l which will be different from the parental phenotypes which is there. So, just to review some terms associated with genetic linkage which we are talking about. So, linkage is defined as the close physical association between two loci on a chromosome that prevents independent assortment. Phase is the nature of linkage between two alleles in a double heterozygote. The phase of two loci is said to be in coupling or in the cis configuration if both dominant alleles and both recessive alleles segregate together or in repulsion in the trans configuration if the dominant allele of each gene segregates with the recessive allele of the other. The haplotype is the specific order and configuration of alleles on one chromosome. An important part is what is syntony. Syntonic genes lie on the same chromosome and they may or may not demonstrate linkage and as I said the widely separated genes are effectively unlinked due to multiple crossovers in between. Syntony is also a term used to describe genes arranged in the same order on chromosome of different species. The corresponding segments of chromosomes from different species are syntonic in origin are said to be syntonic regions. The linkage group is defined as a collection of genes which demonstrate linkage and therefore map together. In physical terms a linkage group is basically equivalent to a chromosome. 
Pseudo linkage is referred to as a situation where loci on separate chromosomes appear to be linked. And sometimes this is seen in translocation heterozygotes and can also occur when a tetraploid species undergoes diploidization forming alternative homozoigous pairing between the four related chromosomes which is there. So basically this is about the basic concept of linkage we talked about. is seen as a deviation from the independent assortment wherein the two genes that are said to be linked are inherited together. However, the recombination is seen as a deviation from complete linkage. So, if two genes which are present on the same chromosome and they are always inherited together then there is no possibility of a recombinant to occur. But because there in the F2 offsprings there are certain phenotypes that are observed which are different from the parental phenotypes, it is said that there is a partial linkage that has occurred and recombination has led to the occurrence of this re, uh, these uh, recombinant phenotypes. So what is recombination? In this particular session the learning objectives would be un to understand the basis of recombination, to understand the molecular mechanism of crossing over. To understand the cytological basis of crossing over, we will look at some cytological proofs that shows that how the crossing, overs are, crossing over occur. So recombination is any process generating new combinations of pre-existing genetic materials. So when two species or two individuals are crossed and there occurs in F2 generation new combination of the genetic material which is different from the parental phenotype, which is different from the parental genotype, it is said that the recombination has occurred. So recombination is production of new combination of alleles at two or more loci. There are different mechanisms. The first is the independent segregation of genes on different chromosomes. So if parental genotype there is capital A capital B and the another parent has a small a small b, the recombinant genotype will have a capital A small b and small a and small b. So ideally these two loci are lying on the separate chromosomes and when each of the chromosome is independently assorted then still you get the recombinant genotype such as a capital A small a which is different than the uh, or capital A small b which is different than the parental genotype of capital A capital B. So independent segregation can lead to recombination crossing over between genes on the same chromosome. So that is usually when they are the two diff genes are said to be lying on the different chromosomes. If the two genes are lying on the same chromosome still the recombinants can occur because there might occur a crossing over between these two particular homologous chromosomes giving rise to the newer genotype of capital A small b and small a capital B which was different than the parental phenotype. Or there can be a phenomena which is called as gene conversion where the capital B can get converted into a small b. So we will not touch gene conversion in this session but we will talk about the first and two mechanisms of recombination that occurs. 
Now we have to understand that in sexual reproduction, a diploid cell undergoes a specialized form of differentiation division which is called as meiosis in order to half the number of chromosomes and produce haploid, haploid gametes for fertilization. So meiosis involve two sequential divisions without an interfering round of DNA replication. The first division is the reductional division where the homologous chromosomes segregate to opposite poles of the spindle and the second division is the same as a mitotic division where chromatids are segregated. So meiosis 1 have a protracted prophase divided into 5 stages, leptonema, zygonema, pachynema, diplonema and diakinesis characterized by the behavior and appearances of the chromosome. So if you look at this then during the zygotene stage the homologous chromosomes become aligned. So homologous chromosomes are basically which are similar in sequence, they are not identical in sequence, they are similar in sequence coming from each of the parent. So when the fert in the fertilized egg when the meiosis had to occur then during the zygotine, zygotene stage these homologous com chromosomes coming from e either of the parents becomes aligned together. This process is termed as synapsis. It is a purely, poorly characterized process, however it involves a proteinaceous synaptinimal complex which forms between the two pairs of the sister chromatids. So sister chromatids contain this particular uh, uh, synaptonemal complex leading to the alignment of the two homologous chromosomes. This four strand structure containing two homologous chromosomes is said to be a bivalent or a tetrad because now it will have four chromatids which are there. So there will be two sister chromatids and two non sister chromatids which will be there of the different homologous chromosomes and they will tend to lie together. So two chromosomes so bivalent but four chromatids so tetrad uh, formation which is said to be there in the zygotene stage. In most organisms homologous recombination occurs between the synapsed chromosomes and is required for proper segregation. This occurs at the packetine stage and involves large protein complexes termed recombination nodules which contain recombination enzymes. So we know that recombination means the mixing of the genetic material. Now we are looking at that where during the development of the offspring or the formation of the offspring this recombination is occurring. So it is occurring, it is starting at the packetine stage of the meiotic cycle which is there. When the homologous chromosomes synapse then there is a homologous recombination or exchange of the genetic material that is occurring. The mechanism of segregation are unique to meiosis 1 after the recombination has occurred then the segregation towards the meiosis 1 the segregation towards the pole occurs. The synaptonemal complex breaks down during the diplotene stage and homologous chromosomes remain associated uh, due to the chiasmata. Chiasmata is the point where the crossing over has occurred. So crossing over is between the exchange of materials between the non sister chromatids. So the place the point where this exchange has occurred and we will look into that that there is a physical breakage and exchange of the, of the segments which is occurring. So this physical breakage the point where it occurs is called as the chiasmata. And at diplostene stage the homologous chromosomes they remain attached to the chiasmata. The D synapsis continues during dikinesis and there is a terminalization of chiasmata that occurs when the chromosomes become fully condensed. The chromosome then align on the metaphase plate and the resolution of the recombination intermediates marks the beginning of the anaphase where homologous chromosomes gets segregated. So this occurrence of recombination or basically the crossing over uh, is starts at the um, Zygotene stage when the homologous chromosomes align together it proceeds during the propacetine stage and it gets completed during the diplotene stage of prophase 1 of the meiosis 1 in the, uh, for in the uh, growing cell which is there. So actually recombination is the result and crossing over is the cause. So this crossing over is leading to the formation of the recombinants which is there. So if you can see then for example now how do they segregate if two markers are located on the separate chromosome so we are talking about the recombination linkage and crossing over all together. 
So, if two markers are located on separate chromosomes that is if they are not physically joined there is no linkage which is there they will undergo independent assortment where the parental and recombination recombinant combination of alleles are required recovered with equal frequency. So, you can see in the top panel that capital A and capital B are lying on two different chromosomes and after that the parental and the recombinant containing a capital A small b as we saw earlier that both of them there is an equal frequency of occurrence which is there. But if two genes are linked together that is they are located on the same chromosome the parental combination of alleles might be expected 100 percent depicting complete linkage because alleles of each parental haplotype are physically joined together. However, due to homologous recombination between the synapsed chromosomes, the recombinant combination of alleles may be generated. So, if they are completely linked, there will be 100 percent occurrence of the uh, parental combination which is there 50 50 percent of each of the parents. But because as shown in the C panel there is a crossing over that occurs between these two particular alleles the recombinants are generated containing the chromosomes containing capital A small b and small a capital B. In this particular diagram there is only one chromosome which is sh shown. So, it is uh, you know if you see at one individual there is only a capital A small a it is not shown the other chromatid is not shown there are only two chromatids are shown for making it simpler. But otherwise there are four chromatids and they will be remain as they will there will be no crossing over in those two chromatids and therefore it is not shown for just simplifying this particular diagram. So, crossing over we are talking about a lot and this crossing over is the physical exchange between paired homologous chromosomes and the crossover is a site of chromosome breakage and strand exchange leading to homologous recombination between the parental chromosomes and the production of recombinant combination of alleles. So, I hope that this is understood till now that there is an independent assortment of two genes which are occurring particularly when they are lying on two different chromosomes. The two genes can be linked together inherited together if they are lying too close on one particular chromosome. Since they are linked and always inherited together there will be no occurrence of if there is a complete linkage there will be no occurrence of recombination which is there. The recombination can occur if the two genes are located on the same chromosome by two mechanisms. One mechanism that the two genes are lying widely apart on the same chromosome. If they are lying widely apart on the same chromosome there will be multiple crossover sites in between and therefore after this multiple crossing over they might generate the parental phenotype only and therefore there will be need no recombination which will be there or the second mechanism is that if in between these two particular genes there is a crossing over that occurs giving rise to the recombinants which is there. So, this crossing over or the physical exchange between these non prepared homologous chromosomes leads to the occurrence of the recombination. And now we say that there is a physical exchange. So, before going on to the evidence which showed that you know actually there is a breakage and there is a change of the segment, we will first look at the molecular mechanism of crossing over in detail given by the Robin Holiday in 1960s. In Rob, uh, he showed that in synapses there was homologous duplexes that align initiation and then what happens is that you can see now the two chromatids are shown. So, there is a parental containing black segments and there is a parental containing white segments uh, white chromosomes. So, there is a uh, if there is uh, the, the, the two homologous chromosome will synapse together. And as you can see there will be an initiation where the nicked stand from initiating duplex invades the recipient duplex displacing the resident strand. So, the resident strand the black strand is displayed uh, is displaced by the white strand which is there. Then occurs what is called as the strand exchange. The displaced strand pairs with the gap in the initiating duplex a point of crossing over and a holiday junction is established. So, there is a strand exchange that occurs and then there is a branch migration. The holiday junction may move from its original point by exchange of strands between duplexes. This may increase or decrease the amount of heteroduplex DNA depending upon the direction of migration. 
The diagram shows the branch migration in the direction of the arrow decreasing the amount of heteroduplex DNA. So, as you can see it the branch will migrate and therefore, it will keep on decreasing the heteroduplex DNA and the branch migration will be there. So, this starting from the synapses in the zygotene stage up to the branch migration which is happening towards the dikinesis stage this is the way the crossing over occurs and as you can see there is a physical displacement or there is a physical exchange between the segments that is occurring. The resolution of the holiday junction in either of the two planes can occur that can generate different products. So, now what happens is when it reaches the anaphase stage then the uh, because the the, uh, the chiasmata or the point of crossing over has terminalized and then it resolved and it can actually resolve in these two different planes. You can see the arrow uh, or the triangles which shows the plane of uh, resolution. One on the left hand side panel when it is resolved into in between after strand exchange and ligation the resolution occurs by cleavage at sites indicated. The nicks are then sealed and the products are generated. So, as you can see there are two different uh, products which are generated the patch and the splice. The result to generate either patch or splice heteroduplex DNA that only splice resolution uh, involves the recombination of the flanking markers. So, only one of the resolution pathway generates a molecule which is recombinant for flanking markers A and B uh, although both pathways generates a region of heteroduplex DNA called as the splash. So, you can see that in the patch position there is an there is no uh, recombination of the marker that has occurred, but there is a patch of a different uh, segment you know in the white chromatid there is a patch of a black chromatid, but there is no recombination of the marker that has occurred. It is only in the splice. So, if only the resolution happens in this particular uh, plane that there will be two uh, recombinants that will be occurring for these particular two alleles which is shown. So, this happens in the anaphase stage and the gametes are then produced and it undergoes meiosis 2. So, this is how this is the molecular mechanism of crossing over that there is actually a physical break then this break leads to the exchange of the segments and then there is a ligation or there is a resolution again by cleavage and creation of a neck and then the ligation occurs to create the uh, recombinant products which is there. Now, what is the physical proof or evidence that recombination involves exchange of chromosomal material? So, there was cytological basis of crossing over which was there and the cytological the first cytological evidence for crossing over was collected in 1931 in maize by using a line heterozygous for chromosome number 9 bearing a large terminal knob and the capital C small c and wx and wax genes. So, we will look at this that these two particular genes was used and the first cytological evidence was shown by McClintock and another scientist uh, to basically depict that there is a uh, physical uh, breakage in the chromosomes that lead to the crossing over that takes place. Crichton and McClintock in 1931 and their paper was published in PNAs found PNAs found that the cytologically detected knob followed the syntonic genetic markers and correspond to the expectation in the recombinants. We will see this in detail. Around the same time Kurt Stern used in Drosophila a fragmented X chromosome marked with carnation I and bar I and another X chromosome with the wild type alleles and also a fragment of the Y chromosome attached. Again the genetically observed recombination was associated with the physical exchange of the cytologically marked chromosomes. So, Crichton and McClintock experiment and Stern experiment clearly depicted that there is a physical breakage. It was the first cytological evidence to show that there is a physical breakage and resealing. So, there is actually a change of the segments which occur during the process of the crossing over. So, let us see in detail these uh, two experiments. Uh, for example, the Crichton and McClintock experiment we will start with. They used corn chromosome 9 markers. There were two markers which was used one is called as the C which is for the colorless seed 
and WX which is for the waxy endosperm. So colorless seed and waxy endosperm they use these two uh, markers and they created a heterozygote with the following characteristics. The repulsion configuration of genetic markers. So, if you remember the repulsion, the phase of linkage is basically when there is a dominant allele of one marker and the recessive allele of the other and uh, the same thing and they you know separately uh, they segregate together and they also uh, they created the, the heterozygote also had cytological landmarks on both ends of one of the chromosome. One end, so, one of the chromosome had this knob which was basically the cytological landmark. So, they next performed a text test cross to this stock with a small c small c wx wx tester. So, as you can see the cytogenetic stock was basically the small c wx and a capital C wx and if you can see there was a translocated part on one of the chromosome and there was a knob the cytological mark which was there. So, capital C WX, WX was the small WX was the translocated part. So, if you can see one of the chromosome is having a knob which is a cytological marker and a capital C WX there was a repulsive phase of linkage which is there. So, when this was crossed to the tester stroke containing the recessive uh, alleles for both the marker genes the small C WX when it was crossed then these four phenotypes were obtained. The four phenotypes uh, there were parental phenotypes and there were recombinant phenotypes and as you can see that the recombinant phenotypes there was if crossing over involves the physical exchange of chromosomal material then the recombinant phenotypes should each contain one of the cytological landmarks and this indeed was the result that they obtained. So, you can clearly see that in the recombinant phenotype one of the recombinant phenotype is containing the knob and one of the recombinant phenotype is containing the translocated WX region that part it is containing. So, that means there is a physical exchange of segment that has occurred or there is a crossing over that has occurred between the capital C and the small WX of the parental phenotype giving rise to these two kinds of recombinant phenotypes. So, it was cytologically clearly stating that there is a physical exchange between the uh, things that occur. From this work it could be conclusively stated that crossing over involves the exchange of genetic material between the chromosomes. So, looking at the Stearns experiment he worked in the drosophila. In the female fly one of the two fragments of an X chromosome carried mutant alleles for carnation eye. Car is recessive showing light eye color and barred eye which is dominant showing narrower eyes. So, uh, he chose this two traits on the X chromosome. The other X chromosome had a part of Y attached. So, basically the chromosome was modified uh, so that it has the cytological marker as in the case of uh, Creighton and uh, McClintock experiment it was there. So, it contained a translocated part and a knob part and translocated part resulted in the repulsive uh, phase of linkage. Similarly, in here he chose two uh, markers which was basically the carnation eye marker and the bar eye marker. Carnation eye was recessive that gave the light eye color and bar eye was basically the dominant showing the narrower the si size of the eyes was narrower. The, and the other X chromosome had the uh, cytological marker containing this Y attached to it. Uh, but it carries the two normal alleles for the two genes the carnation and the bar eye. So, that the female heterozygote for both these genes had barred eyes but normal eye color since car is recessive to plus. So, basically as I said the plus plus is the wild type car is the carnation. So, the genotype of the female heterozygote will be car it will have the carnation eye but it will have the plus marker therefore, it will have the wild type allele a wild type eye color or a normal eye color and a capital B and a wild type allele for bar, but since bar is, uh, is dominant it will have narrower eyes. So, it will have normal eye color narrower eyes and that was the female heterozygote and in the Y chromosome it ha in the other X chromosome it has the attached Y chromosome part. Such females were crossed with male flies having recessive alleles for both these genes. So, there was the carnation gene which was the recessive gene and plus gene which was again a recessive gene. So, for both these genes this particular thing was present. If no crossing over takes place between the two genes in question, 
two types of gametes that is carnation and capital B and plus plus will be produced from the female fly. So, if both the X chromosomes are segregating independently and there is no crossing over that is occurring, the gametes which will be produced will be car and B located on one black chromosome and plus and plus which is located on the other uh, carrying that uh, Y chromosome part also. So, the two gametes will be there is no crossover and there will be these two gametes that will be formed. If however, the crossing over is occurring, it will give two additional type of gametes which will be the CAR and the PLUS gene for the bar I and PLUS of CAR and capital B gene for the again the bar I gene which is there. So, it is shown the single crossover if it is there then it will have the CAR PLUS and PLUS B as two additional gametes which are there. Now, due to fertilization of two types of non crossover and the other two type of crossover gametes by male gametes carrying the X chromosome, four kinds of female flies will be produced as shown. Another four kinds of male flies will be produced due to fertilization by Y carrying male gametes. So, typical crossover the X chromosome coming from the male will combine with one of the gametes from the you know. So, four different kinds of gametes are produced by the female and two different types of gametes will be produced by the male. Now, four different type of gametes from the female will be hybridized with one of the X chromosome from the male or one of the Y chromosome for the male. Uh, from the male category. So, there will be four different type of females which will be produced and four different types of males that will be produced. And now looking at it the flies which are classified as crossovers on the basis of phenotype that is carnation with the normal eye shape and barred with the normal eye colored were studied cytologically. So, basically the crossovers or the recombinant phenotypes flies were taken and looked at cytologically that what the chromosomes they are carrying and it was found that carnation flies did not have any fragmented X chromosome, but rather had normal X chromosome. On the other hand, barred flies had a fragmented X chromosome with a segment of Y chromosome attached to one of the two fragments of X chromosome. Such cytological observations suggested that genetic crossing over was accompanied with an actual exchange of chromosome segments. So, as you can see in the single crossovers, there is an actual, there is a physical exchange of the segments that is occurring. It is giving rise to the production of a gamete where there is a capital B and plus with a part of Y chromosome which is there. It is a recombinant chromosome and another one, the fourth column which is the carnation eyes and a wider eyes, but with no attached Y chromosome which is there. So, these two uh, recombinants will cytologically completely show that there is a physical exchange between the, uh, the physical exchange of segments that occur during the crossing over which is there. So, basically the crossing over is the basis of occurrence of recombination and recombination occurred because there is a partial linkage which is there and linkage is an exception to the independent assortment of the genes as depicted by the Mendel's law. Now, this linkage or the occurrence of the frequency of recombination is used to map the genes on the chromosome which we will take in our subsequent session. Thank you. With this note, thank you ma'am. Thank you so very much for giving us a very another productive session on genetics and dear friends, we believe that your feedback are very important for us. So, if you have any query, then you can mail us at info.cc at written We would love to solve your query in the next time when Dr. Charu Dogra Rabat visits our studio. Till then, keep watching us and keep giving your feedback. We would be meeting again very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you ma'am. Thank you so very much. Thank you.